Welcome to Lewisburg United Methodist, whether you're here worshiping in person or you're joining us online or at Greenbrier Radio, we're just glad that you're here to welcome one another. I thought it would be most appropriate for us to throw snowballs at one another, so here's how we're going to do it. You're going to pack it, you're going to find somebody, and you're going to throw it at them. Ready? Here we go! <laughs> welcome. We are so glad you're here. If you did not grab your psalm booklet that we're going to be looking at all the month of January and February, they're in the center of the sanctuary, and the ushers will gladly um, show you where they are. We'd love for you to take one of those. And also want you to know that the Can You Help station is right in the middle of the sanctuary, hopefully where you trip over it, so that you know you have to sign up in a way that you can help be a piece of the puzzle to make Lewisburg United Methodist continue as a vibrant place. Finally, um, Donna is here with envelopes for giving. If you're someone that likes to use the giving offering envelopes, she will be out behind the double doors during worship and after worship. But if you are online, you are welcome to reach out to the church office and she'll also help you. As we begin our worship, Chris will lead us in our opening song, which is printed on your bulletin and also on the screen. Let's sing together. As we call our hearts to worship, you will see a song of response on the screen. And when I point to you, if you'll join us in singing that response as we read together part of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like now. merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy So far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. 
but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Sing with us one last time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Amen. Will our children come and join us? for some time with Tina, and then you can choose afterwards to go with Ursula or sit back with your parents. How are you? Good. How many of you like to receive a gift? Those are fun, right? Yeah. How about I have a gift for you today? You want a gift? Yeah. All right, you have to close your eyes first. Don't open them until I tell you to. I'm going to put the gift right beside you. All right, ready? Open. Are you not excited about it? It's just a piece of paper? Are you not excited? I'm wondering what it's for. Oh, it's not very exciting when it doesn't have anything in it. But you know what I could do? I could take, I'm so wrapped up. I could take that, I have one for myself, and I could use it as a bookmark. Now is it useful? Yeah. Yeah, so it has to have a use for it. So gifts are like blessings. They're helpful, they're useful, and they're encouraging. So if I would give you crayons, is it useful now? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because I could draw on it. You could draw on it, that's right. So you've got to have things. Did you know in the Psalms that we're studying for two months, there's a Psalm 103 that talks about the blessings that God gives us. So I'm just going to read you the first part. Praise the Lord, body and soul, from my head to my toe. I praise his holy name. I will not forget all that he has done for me. He forgives my sins. What does that mean? He heals. He, he, like if you do something wrong, is he mad for, with you, at you forever? No, he forgives you. That's right. If somebody makes you mad... Should you be mad at them? Should you forgive them if they do something wrong? Yeah. He heals my body. Have you ever been sick before? So God helps us heal. He saves me. He surrounds me with love. Does God love you? Yeah. Yes. Do you love God? That's right. He gives me life day after day. And he sets things right. Those are some of the blessings in Psalm 103. That God gives us. Should we just keep the blessings or should we help give the blessings to other people? Give the blessings. Give the blessings to other people. So what I want you to do is pick your favorite color out of that bag and we're going to make this gift that I gave you a useful gift. And I want you to draw a heart on it. Why would I ask you to draw a heart on it? Love. It's love. And who loves you? God. God loves you, right? And we should love him. love him. That's right. So I gave you this gift, but now I want you to give this gift to somebody else. And when you give it to them, I want you to say, God loves you and he loves me too. All right? So when you get a gift, it's really better if you give it back to somebody else. And one of the ways that God blesses us is that he loves us very much every day. All right, let's say a little prayer and you can repeat after me. Dear God, 
Thank you for Jesus, and thank you for blessings. Help me to remember that when I receive a blessing from you, I need to bless someone else with that gift. I love you, and I know you love me too. Amen. Thank you very much. You can keep the crayons and give the blessing to somebody else. Have a great week. You're welcome. Today we are looking together at Psalm 103, and so we'd like to read that passage together. It's printed in your bulletin, and it will also be on the screen. Let's read. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. We welcome Barb Miller, who will be sharing her testimony connected to Psalm 103. Good morning. Um, what first spoke to me in Psalm 103 is verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul, in all my inmost being, praise his holy name. I saw that as just not referring to David's praise to God, but also a command that we are also to do exactly that. Following this, there is a whole list of reasons to praise God. But even if you currently don't feel like you have any reasons to praise, praise him anyway. The Lord simply spoke and the universe was created from a nothingless chaos. If God can take that and simply speak into being a universe that has laws of physics and chemistry that make all the parts work together, then he is definitely worthy of my praise. As a math teacher, that's especially amazing to me. I may not understand it all, but the formulas work. The psalm does not say to praise God when things are good. It simply says to praise him. Despite your circumstances, continue to praise. And not just superficially, but in all our inmost being, praise. Taking the action to praise, even when things are bad, the praise will fill our inmost being, and then we can truly praise him. We all have chaos in our lives. Right now, Craig and I have chaos coming at us from several directions. God supports what he has created. Any chaos in our lives will be resolved. It may not be resolved the way we want, but God will be there to support us. For that, we can praise him. Psalm 103 speaks of many ways God supports us on a daily basis. His love for us is as high as the heavens and as far as the east is from the west. For these reasons, I can praise the Lord, O oh my soul, with all my inmost being, praise his holy name.
reasons for my heart to I'm Mary Claire Warden, and I interned with the youth starting in 2017 and have been serving on and off since. While reading Psalm 103 and preparing for this Sunday, I kept highlighting, rereading, and getting caught on one line. And I've come to realize God usually bookmarks those to whisper something to your soul. And verse 5 is now circled and highlighted in my Bible. Praise the Lord, O my soul, who satisfies your desires with good things, or in another translation, he fills my life with good things. I had met the Lord at summer camp in middle school, and everything changed for me the next school year. I started praying for God-centered friendships and God-centered relationships. I didn't know what that looked like, but I asked God to show me. That same school year, a guy named Caleb had moved from Beckley to Eastern Greenbrier. I found out he was a church kid like me, and I got to know him more. At that time in middle school, girls were outlining their ideal guy. Um, tall, played basketball, blue eyes, blonde, wore cool clothes, smart, curly hair, funny. I had made a rough draft of things I would prefer in a guy. Six foot three, at least, um, got good grades, and was funny, but not mean funny. In a way, I was telling God the desires of my heart. Little did I know, God knew, but he was going to introduce me to a guy that, on a good day of six foot two, <laughs> lives to serve others, graciously points me to God and picks me up emotionally and spiritually over and over again. God satisfied the desires of my heart with good, even great things. He exceeded what I have planned, drafted, or expected for my life. God sees what we are seeking out and fills our lives with those good things, according to his will. God gave me what I didn't know I needed. As Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, according to the power that works in us. So I encourage you this week to tell God the desires of your heart and watch him satisfy your desires with good things. Amen. Oh, mm-hmm. 
Good morning. And she's right on a good day. I'm only 6'2". So, <laughs> uh, my name is Caleb Warden. Uh, if you've probably seen me play guitar for the church, so uh, that's kind of what I always do. And then we recently started helping out with Huddle as well. Um, but so Bev asked us to share what God's been teaching us through 103. And one of the things that I quickly learned in this psalm is that David's writing it as a form of worship. Um, God's been teaching me lately that everything we do is worship, and then we have many, many reasons to be worshiping God. He's given us blessings beyond what we have ever deserved, and as it says in verse 17, the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, meaning we literally, God literally loves us more than, than we could ever know. Um, the musical form of worship has always been where I've been called to serve in the church. I, I started playing guitar for my church in Beckley when I was in sixth grade, and uh, then when my family moved to Lewisburg in 2010, we would still drive twice a week, every Wednesday and Sunday, from Lewisburg to Beckley, just so I could play church in the worship band. So it's always been where I've been called to, to worship. But when I got to college and I stopped playing guitar twice a week for, for a worship band, um, I've realized that worship extends much further than just music. Um, everything that we do in our life can be a form of worship. Um, prayer and serving in the church is obviously a form of worship. Um, our, our careers and our jobs and the work we do, whether it's at an office or uh, at a restaurant or at a hospital or on a construction site, it, it's a form of worship. God's taught me that our life at home is also a form of worship. The way we interact with our loved ones and the, the conversations we have with our, with our family and our friends is a form of worship. Honestly, you could, you could probably make an argument that following the speed limit is a form of worship, but <laughs> I'm not so good at that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> So I, I, one thing I love about the Methodist Church is that we call these services worship services. You know, music's only a small part of it. We, we only do a couple songs every Sunday, but being with our church family and receiving a message from the Lord and, and from our leadership uh, is, is a beautiful form of worship. So through these verses, God's been teaching me that um, I need to look for worship wherever I am. You know, David wrote in Psalms, as he, in this psalm, he basically wrote, uh, this psalm has a simple form of worship, and he writes how we have essentially unlimited reasons to be worshiping the Lord. So that's uh, just a little bit of what he's been teaching me. Thank you. As we have music played, we encourage you to respond to these gifts and these words by lighting a candle at one of our stations or using the altar for a prayer or maybe just right where you are having some time um, with God. And certainly you can use your psalm booklet to underline and circle what God is speaking to your heart while we have this song played. Father Ben Lewis, LaVon Miller for a broken hip, prayers for Ryan Vaughn, continued prayers for the McGraw family, prayers for Marianne Brewster for continued healing, continued prayers for the youth and children's ministry as they continue to grow. Prayers for Laura Nestor and Alan Patterson. 
Linda Wakefield Ford and family on the loss of her son, Gary Wayne. Prayers for healing for Tim Freeman. Continued prayers for Tina Tuckwiller, Al Petrie, Jim Childers, the Limley family, and the family of Ben Lewis. Prayers for the family and many friends of Oscar Morgan. Oscar passed away this week. Prayers for Pat Arnold and family. Prayers for Rob Vass, who lost his wife. Kevin McMillan asks for prayers for himself and the family as they go through troubled times. Harold and Michelle Bland would like to thank everyone for all the get well wishes. And for all the unspoken requests here in the sanctuary and online. God, your psalm this morning reminds us in verse 18, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So we come before you asking your compassion on those that need healing in their body, in their spirit, in their mind. We ask God that you would remind us how well we are loved by you. That if we're in a place of brokenness or chaos or uncertainty, that you would remind us that you are a good God who wants to bless our souls. We lift up to you all of those concerns that we mentioned, but also the ones that we left unsaid. We're thankful that you're the God of compassion, and so you already know our needs. You know all things about all of us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am enjoying this testimony month for January and February, not just because I don't have to preach, although that's a gift, but also just it's so powerful to hear from you, to hear that God is speaking to your hearts and that God is teaching you through his word. So if you haven't yet, be encouraged to take this with you and study Psalm 103 all week. Just spend time with a little piece of it each day. Underline what God speaks to your heart. Highlight what he may be highlighting to your heart. So as we close in benediction, um, we will close with a song, but I want to close by doing this. I'm going to say, bless the Lord, and I'm going to ask you to say, oh, my soul. Are you ready? Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Let's stand together for our song of benediction. liturgical year this is called ordinary time I don't know how ordinary it is it's actually really different lots of folks like to ask the question when are we going to get back to normal but I don't know this might be our new normal for quite a while so we have to trust that God has something new that he is doing we're so thankful that you join in and watch us online with our live stream worship that's something new that God has done and we're glad you're part of it. If you would like to give an offering or a gift, there's three ways you can do that. You can mail it in at PO Box 69, Lewisburg. You can give online through our website, or you can give electronically or here on Facebook. Thank you so much for being part 
of this ordinary time that's not very ordinary.